across the Atlantic in New York. And while well, the infrastructure is very good, it's certainly not instant um, at this stage. Um, and secondly, to plot that data, you got to render it, and you know you dump uh, a couple of hundred thousand points and try and render it. It's going to take a little bit of time, and you know all the while you've got someone sitting there banging their keyboard, and they just want to see a graph for two seconds. Um, that's all they want. Uh, so we were kind of looking around for a solution, and we kind of stumbled upon a kind of a neat little algorithm in the field of cartography, which is the ancient art of drawing maps. Um, so it's a quite an interesting field. I mean, it draws a lot of expertise from different areas, and it's evolved a lot um, through the years with technology. Um, you know, now we've all got Google Maps on our phone, and that's fantastic. Um, but it also brings with it um, some trivia gems like the coastline paradox. Uh, now this is the observation that the coastline of the length of a coastline is basically it, it's not well defined. So if if someone were to ask, you know, how long is the coastline of, of Great Britain? Um, the answer is kind of I don't know. It depends. Um, it depends how you measure it. It depends how much time you have. Um, so you know the coastline of, of a body of land is going to be complex down to a, an atomic scale, to a tiny, tiny scale. Uh, so if I was to set off with uh, you know, a pedometer in my pocket and just start jogging, jogging around the coastline, um, it might take me a few weeks, I don't know, uh, maybe months. Um, and I'd probably get a pretty good estimate. Um, but it's, it's not going to be very exact. I'm going to you know, miss a lot along the way. I'm probably not going to want to get my feet wet, so I'm going to you know, not, not get the exact coastline. Um, but if I was to go back with you know, a, a calipers and you know, get a little bit more detail, I'd probably get a, a larger measurement, a better measurement. Um, <coughs> but you know, at that stage, I would have spent maybe two years of my life on my hands and my knees. And I won't have a whole lot to show for it, you know, someone might be interested in my measurement, but that's, that's not really all that important. Um, and this is all kind of peripheral to the, the problem we're solving, but I guess it, it leads us to a kind of a, a pragmatic approach to dealing with this issue, which is plotting, you know, simple XY data. Um, so what a cartographer does is, you know, they want to create a map that's, that's useful to people and you can print it economically on a piece of paper that's not too large. Uh, to do that, they take lots of detail that's not really that important and just get rid of it. You know, they, they draw what's important, they you know, distill the, the essence of a, a piece of land and put it on paper and you know, hopefully their map sells all over the world or you know, ends up on Google Maps or whatever. Um, and that's what they do. Um, so we kind of took that and thought about it in the context of time series, which is by all accounts a kind of a simpler problem domain. It's just X, Y data. You know, we don't have to worry about politics and you know stuff changing. And the data we're dealing with, it kind of it behaves relatively in a, in a kind of a sensible fashion. We can kind of we know what we can expect. Um, you know, like a say, you take financial data. If you get, you know, you can kind of guess what sort of data you're going to get on a given day, and if you get, say, twelve quotes in a row all at the same level, I mean, that's that's something that's very easy to optimize if you're drawing a graph. Um, so, I mean, you can take it for granted here that the red and blue line are straight and parallel. Um, but if I was to tell you that they weren't, I mean, you probably wouldn't notice, and you know what, it probably doesn't matter. Um, you know, this, this isn't really trying to communicate a whole lot, it's just two straight lines, um, or almost straight lines. Um, you know, small divergences don't matter that much. What's, what's important is communicating the underlying data kind of accurately, um, you know, considering your audience. Uh, so that kind of brings us on to this, this cartographic algorithm, the Raymer Douglas Puker algorithm, um, which is basically a way of, of simplifying a kind of a complicated uh, XY curve in this instance. Um, so what it involves is just taking a, an initial curve. Um, so 
so in this case we've gone, gone pretty big and took six points. Um, and what you do is you, you take the first and the last points initially and just draw a line between them. And then you grab the, the furthest point from that line and you, you call that, you know, you, you, it's, a, it's a pivot point. So if, that's, if that distance is less than some threshold, you just discard all the intermediate points. Um, they don't matter anymore, you just assume that they're not important. Um, in this case, it's greater than a threshold. So we use that as a pivot point and we split the curve into two separate sections and we start again on the new, the new sections. Um, and we just repeat the exact same thing. Um, so in this case, on the left-hand side, um, we've calculated the distance and that's greater than a threshold. Uh, so we, we split that again um, into, into two parts and in this case there's no intermediate points so we're done on that side. And on the right hand side we've, we've calculated the distance and that's, that's below our threshold so we just delete all the points in the middle um, and we're done. Uh, and we've simplified it to four points in this case. So not a great improvement. Um, and there we go. Um, so in our experience like this is, this has been, you know, it's, it's it's relatively effective on financial data. We've been able to just um, dump tons and tons of data, and you know that translates into less data to stick across the wire, which uh, you know it translates into less rendering time, um, and that just means less wall time for your end user to be smashing their keyboard, um, which I think is a good thing. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for me. So. Um, if you're interested in reading more, uh, there's the white paper on the first derivatives website, um, along with quite a few more at this stage. Um, and we've got you know, a few examples there. You can see uh, a sample of implementation. Um, yeah, basically all of the information is there. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Sure. Are you, um, are you recording all the market data and then rejecting some points? Are you uh, selecting with a filter? Um, Are you pre-filtering before it gets recorded? Or? No, so this would be uh, the use case of a user kind of querying data, say in a big HDB, and they just want to plot it. So say they're looking at you know raw tick data. Um, this is a way of filtering before it gets to them. Yeah. Um, okay. Just so you get a, a faster plot with you record relevant with data. data. You reduce sure. the data into it. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> Why do you choose this algorithm in KDB? Because um, this algorithm is, in my opinion, not uh, appropriate for KDB. It is an iteration. As you know, iteration in KDB using scanner over is always slow. So normally people choose to use a C library or implement the algorithms in, in, in C and then plug in into KDB. Yeah, sure. Um, we did consider that. Um, we, we stuck with the KDB solution because it's a pretty neat short implementation and it works relatively well. I mean, it's not, it's not super fast, so it's always going to be a trade-off. Um, but yeah, I mean, C would, would probably be more, more an appropriate place to, to write it. Uh, OK. Is that it? If you mind if I ask one more? Go for it. Because um, it's, it's basically like an approximation method that you're doing, right? You're reducing the re resolution of the measurements. You're deleting points, yeah. yeah. So there, there's something that I just noticed recently that I wanted to play with. I'm not sure if it was in 3.2 or 3.3, but it's a way of turning a dictionary into a step function. Right? Yep. So I mean, if you make a key table that is now a dictionary and you're, you're grouping in buckets, you can actually make it a step function <coughs> natively so that if you select whatever re resolution you want, it's like setting minimum time resolution on the measurements. So you could take the last value in <coughs> whatever, 100 millisecond bytes or something. Yep. Turn it into a set <coughs> function so that uh, whenever they reference any point in between, they'll get the previous values. Uh, yeah, I mean, so this is a good question. And um, I guess bucketing is what we we're trying to avoid with this algorithm because it kind of it ultimately always results in distorting the data, um, you know, distorting the plot. So an average is going to attenuate peaks. Yeah. Uh, first or last is going to miss data. Um, so what this tries to do is just catch catch important movements. Yep. 
Uh, last question. Is this a good man now in production? Is this now integrated in your own product here or is this only a toy project or toy algorithm that you sure, have? Sure, yeah. I mean, it's it's all in the white paper. Feel free to use it. Uh, if you find it useful, I'd love to hear about it. Um, yeah. we, we haven't impl implemented it in production. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. So are you looking for a game peak before you try to <laughs> Oh, we played around with it. I'm pretty happy with those records. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm probably running out of time, so yeah, sure. I'll hand off to Mark. Uh, yeah, thank you.